It does feel as if all of the numbers right now when it comes to COVID-19 seem to be moving in the wrong direction. How alarming should, is this? I think it's so important that the detection systems that have been set up in the UK have picked up this signal that we're seeing a really sharp rise in cases. And it's come from several sources. I think everyone is in agreement that we really need to act very quickly now in order to prevent this from growing exponentially. I think that's the main point is that we must act fast because it's so much harder to get this sort of thing under control if you delay even a few days um, is, is potentially going to be quite dangerous now at this particular moment. Interesting to say that even a few days of delay uh, could be uh, critical. So Mark Walport, the former chief scientific advisor, uh, said that Britain is on the edge of losing control of COVID. Do you think he's right? Well, yes, I think that is right. It's, it's a bit like water seeping through a dam. You know, it starts as a trickle. And if you don't do something about it, then it can turn into a, um, a, a real sort of a cascade. Um, and we know from, for example, the REACT study, which is uh, being run by Paul Elliott and uh, Steve Riley, that the reproduction number has now jumped. You know, it was down at about 0.5 at its best during the summer. It's now 1.7. So that's 1.7 people for every person who's infected, and that means exponential growth. And there's a, a story which has been leaked into the Sunday Times today showing that it's back in, old, in, in care homes as well. So, you know, we know that these are very vulnerable pockets. It's not just in the younger people. It's, it's starting to appear in, in people who are more vulnerable. And that in, inevitably is going to be followed by hospital admissions and deaths. So, you know, we need to act quickly. And this isn't the game. You know, we shouldn't be out trying to party as hard as we can in the run up to Monday's lockdown. We should all be really thinking about what we can do now to, uh, to slow down the spread. Um, talking about what we can do to slow down the spread, of course, from Monday, we'll see these new rules coming in. The rule of six, you can't meet more than uh, six people uh, at any time inside or outside. Do you think that we need to look at further restrictions, uh, perhaps it's encouraging people to work from home again, perhaps it's curfews? What do you think? It's really difficult to get the rules sensible and straight and uh, and easy to understand and i can quite see why the government wants to bring in something which is very simple and straightforward i mean the rule of six is based on some statistical modeling so it's not just arbitrary they haven't picked the number out, out of out of thin air um but it does seem somewhat irrational in some of the detail and i can appreciate that but i'm, I'm afraid you know it's going to cause pain and suffering for us all to go back to some degree of lockdown. But if we don't do this now, we're going to be right back in hard lockdown in short order. That's the only way we have at the moment for controlling this. But there are other things on the horizon. I think that's really encouraging. We just need to slow it down and delay it and wait for, um, for vaccines and for better treatments. Just to pick up on something you said there, what do you think is irrational about the government's policy then? Well, I think people have been, you know, complaining widely about the, um, you know, the fact that you can carry on doing things like um, exercising in groups and uh, doing sports and uh, getting together for special events, but yet you can't have, um, you can't have both a grandmother and a grandfather come to visit your home if you're a family of five. So it, you know, it is inevitably going to create those. Um, those difficulties which are hard to explain in terms of, of uh, rational advice. But it is, on the other hand, very simple. And I think simplicity is so important. We've had some rather complicated rules which have been very hard to interpret and not backed up actually by legal enforcement. So this is, this is different now. It is legally enforceable and it's very simple. Uh, yeah, that certainly there's uh, positives uh, when it comes from a simple message. Um, we've got a growing number of cases. Schools have only just gone back. The weather, of course, has yet to get uh, really cold. Um, and yet we've also got many, many young people returning to universities, uh, which will be kind of levels of mass migration, if you like, internal, internal to the country with people moving around to different parts of the United Kingdom. How concerned are you about the impact of universities uh, on case numbers? Well, I think universities have gone to great lengths to try to make the return to university as safe as it possibly can be. We know that the major transmission is likely to be in 
social settings, you know, in halls of residence with freshers, drinking events and so on. And those are definitely the times when transmission is likely to occur. Um, I mean, you know, many universities, including my own, have put in a lot of measures to try to mitigate this. Um, and I think we we can do it safely. Um, we are going to do it as safely as we possibly can. We're going to find cases as quickly as we can and try to ensure the safety of both staff and students. I think there's been a huge effort put into this. And I do think that um, that it is right to go back to school, back to university, but with all these safety measures. Of course, uh, the thing that many people are holding out for uh, when it comes to any kind of return to normality is a vaccine. How far off do you think we are? Well, I was a bit pessimistic a few months ago, but I think with all the vaccine trials which are now coming through, um, which are scheduled to deliver a result within the next few months, I, I do feel that on the basis of what we know about the immune system, that it's likely that these immune responses which are being induced by these vaccines may be protective at least for uh, a few months, possibly even years. We just don't know yet. It's early days. But um, it's, I, you know, I do think that we will probably have positive results of at least one of these vaccine trials, probably more than that, by Christmas. And that means that with rapid scaling up, we might have vaccination programs which can roll out to some parts of the world um, over the next um, nine months. So before the winter of 2021-22, I hope that we should have vaccines which, which are effective. The problem is going to be reaching the parts of the world where these vaccines might have maximal impact, um, where the resources are, are low and medical care is, is hard to access. I think it's it's going to be a good solution for those of us who can get the vaccines, but it won't be a global solution.